851, turn right, heading 180. Hey everyone, welcome to DJ's Aviation. It's not every day that we have a positive met with a negative that go hand in hand with each other. Usually it's one or the other. In today's video, I'll be taking a look at the Boeing 737 situation that's currently unfolding, and more specifically, the deliveries of them. We'll need to wind back the clock a little bit in order to really get an idea of the full situation currently unfolding with the 737 aircraft. For decades now, the 737 has been a very popular choice among airlines, and one that has continuously been delivered, within recent years the total delivered tally being well over 400. In 2017, it was 529 alone. In fact, we can actually begin in 2017 and go back all the way to 1996, and there is not one year where the deliveries are under 130. That's an incredible achievement, but the record is now in tatters. In fact, it's now been noted that it is crunch time for Boeing and their 737 aircraft. The CFO of Boeing, Greg Smith, has openly stated that the plane maker will deliver fewer Boeing 737 jets in the third quarter or Q3 of this year, and this is in comparison to its usual rapid production rate. This is all because of the unfinished planes, which are currently parked around the Renton plant. Pictures from above Renton and in the Renton plant itself highlight the scale of unfinished aircraft. At the beginning of this month, which is August, there were over 40 unfitted 737 jets stacked essentially all over the final assembly plant. The aircraft was also stretched along the edges of the Renton airport. Funnily enough, a spokesperson for Boeing said that they needed to be a little more creative with parking around the factory. These aircraft, while looking, one could say, almost close to flying, are still missing critical components like engines, specifically the CFM International engines, which have actually been delayed in getting to the plant. Also, some of the aircraft are missing their fuselages and therefore can't be completely produced, and this is coming from Spirit Aero Systems. These two items are pretty important and critical to a plane getting up in the skies and of course reaching that end goal of being delivered to its customer. While these components have been delayed, both companies have stated that they are getting back on track slowly but surely. But it is just a huge chain reaction. The Chief Financial Officer Greg Smith said each one of those suppliers is getting more on track, but days matter when you're at 52 a month, a day matters, adding, and you don't have a lot of margin for error there. Boeing have had to up their production rate of aircraft, as you probably heard, because of these delays, and in turn are producing 52 jets per month, according to the Seattle Times. That's five jets every two working days. In turn, the knock-on effect is enormous, and as you've seen from the pictures, aircraft are left incomplete. But Boeing continue to still produce the aircraft to the best of their abilities with the parts that are available. While this has impacted Boeing greatly, it is also impacting airlines who plan for the arrival of their new aircraft and having to adjust their schedules and move around current aircraft to cover for the flights which are already logged to be operated by these new 737s. While airlines are being impacted, we can also jump across the Atlantic Ocean to Europe where plane maker Airbus is also being impacted by the delivery of engines for their single aisle aircraft. The problem is only being escalated because of the huge demand in the industry, currently, for single aisle jets. And that's really our big positive. The demand for this sort of aircraft. But the negative is that they are being delivered late, being left incomplete because the demand is so high. How is Boeing combating this? Well, as I mentioned, they are upping the production rates of the 737s to 52 per month. Even if they can't deliver, 52 for that matter, and in recent instances, they haven't even got close to this number. They are doing this through relocating 500 or so employees to the Renton facility to help aid the current workers in assembling the aircraft. It's worth noting that they're also struggling to find people in particular fields after they recently offloaded a lot of their employees with retirement packages. A perfect analogy I can give is this. You're at your local supermarket, which you are the manager of, and you are opening your doors to the public at 8am sharp. You need five cartons of milk, five packs of chips, three loaves of bread, and a packet of cheese. But only two cartons of milk arrive, no packs of chips, one loaf of bread, and no cheese. Essentially what I'm saying is the Renton facility is where all the components meet for final assembly. And similar to my supermarket analogy, if all these components don't arrive in time, 
well then you're in trouble. Ultimately, it's a very interesting situation to say the least. The delay in delivery of key parts like the engines and the fuselage have seriously been hitting Airbus and Boeing hard, and the delivery rates of their 737 and A320 respectively. I'll be sure to keep you updated on the situation as we move forward in time, and hopefully the next time I do do an update, it will be a very positive one. I'd like to thank you very much for your continued support, and I do look forward to you all joining me in the next one. And we'll fly